Hello my lovelies. Today we are making a sweet potato pie using canned yams. Now I know it is positively shocking to find out that a country lady isn't boiling the sweet potatoes and making the crust from scratch. I am absolutely fine making my own crusts and boiling the potatoes if I have three hours to devote to pie making. When you live in the country like I do, you might only run to the grocery store once a week because you're going to spend an hour on the road getting there and back plus the time it takes you in the store. Sometimes we just have to make do. Before we go any farther, I just want to say welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. Thank you so much for stopping by. This channel is not possible without viewer support, so please remember to like this video, subscribe and get notified, comment, and share with your friends and family. This is a time crunch recipe that takes me roughly an hour to make. I will put the print version of the recipe in the description. The first thing you may have noticed is that I call this a sweet potato pie recipe, but the cans say yams on them. Yams are white, yellow, or sometimes pale pink, and native to Africa, while sweet potatoes are orange to red and native to Central and South America, with some purple varieties developing in Asia. While America was being colonized, and for the first roughly 90 years of our nationhood, the United States of America was engaged heavily in the slave trade. It is generally believed that the African slaves transferred the word yam from the tuber they were accustomed to eating and applied it to the root sweet potatoes they had in the Americas. The practice carried forward over the years, especially in the southeastern United States, to the point where we are now. In most U.S. grocery stores, canned sweet potatoes are called yams, and the sweet potatoes carried in the produce section could be called either sweet potatoes or yams. In some areas, sweet potato is used to describe orange varieties, while yam is used for the red varieties. Sometimes Americans make things unnecessarily complicated. Now for the actual recipe. I showed the ingredients in their original packaging at the start of the video. For this part, I have pre-measured everything except the vanilla extract. You will need two cans, 15 to 16 ounces each, of sweet potatoes. You can use either the ones in the syrup or candied yams. Most recipes actually call for a single 40 ounce can, but there will be filling left over. Two whole eggs plus one egg yolk, six ounces or three quarters of a cup of heavy cream or half and half. Of course, they are both sold in pints, 16 ounces, so you will have plenty left over to either whip up for topping or use in other recipes. I really recommend using heavy cream as that produces a more creamy and airy texture. However, I live in a rural area and didn't get heavy cream the last time I went grocery shopping. I was not about to drive 12 miles to the store and 12 miles back just for heavy cream, so I drove 4 miles to the Dollar General instead. They don't sell heavy cream, so I had to make do with half and half. Three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I prefer dark brown sugar, but all they had on the shelf when I went shopping that time was the light. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. One half teaspoon of salt. One third cup, which is roughly five and a half tablespoons of salted butter. If you use unsalted butter, you might want to kick up the salt to three quarters of a teaspoon. 2 tablespoons of cornstarch, 1 and 1 half teaspoons of pie spice, or 1 half teaspoon each of cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. Pie spice often includes allspice or cloves, and I am one of those odd people to whom those taste oddly metallic. So I just use the cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger separately. 1 deep dish pie shell, 8 or 9 inches, doesn't matter. The last time I made a pie, I used a pie crust mix that makes two crusts. 
Since I didn't need the second crust, I froze the extra dough. I took it out of the freezer and let it thaw for two hours on the counter before rolling it out. You can also use pre-made crusts if you want to. And finally, you need whipped cream for the topping. Now, let's make this pie. First and foremost, prepare your crust and put it in the refrigerator. The shell needs to be cold and firm when you fill it and place it in the oven. Next, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 204.4 degrees Celsius. At this point, I want to note that I do wash my hands off camera frequently. Growing up, we stuck our fingers in things to taste and see if they are where they need to be. So if you see my finger go in, don't panic. I wash my hands off camera when I do that. Old habits are hard to break. Now, we start mixing things. Start with the sweet potatoes. The original recipe called for both cans of sweet potatoes in the syrup. However, I found that made the mixture too wet, the pie doesn't firm up correctly, and the end result was disappointing. This time, I drained the syrup from one can and added the syrup from the second. Add the two whole eggs plus one egg yolk and the heavy creamer half and half. Use a mixer or egg beater and beat until smooth. This should take about three minutes if using a mixer or five minutes if you're using a manual egg beater. There may still be small visible bits of sweet potatoes. That's okay. You just want to make sure that anything bigger than a sweet pea is broken up. Once that is smooth, add the vanilla, brown sugar, salt, butter, cornstarch, and the spices. Mix until creamy. This will take about two minutes with a mixer and roughly three to four minutes with a manual egg beater. Once again, you want all larger pieces of sweet potato broken up. Tiny fragments are okay. If this was a five-star restaurant, lumps would be completely unacceptable. But home cooking is a little more forgiving. Remove the pie shell from the refrigerator. Pour or spoon the filling into a pie shell. Spread it evenly using a spatula or the back of a spoon. As you can see, my pie shell is almost overflowing. If I had used a single 40 ounce can of sweet potatoes, I would have had enough left over to make a half size pie. Now this part is important as it keeps the crust from burning. Grab a baking sheet and pour enough water in to cover the bottom with a thin layer of water. The original recipe called for a half cup or four ounces of water. That wasn't even close to enough. It usually takes about one cup or eight ounces of water. And I believe I actually added one and a half cups this time. Place the pie in the middle of the baking sheet and put it in the preheated oven for 15 minutes. When that time is up, don't bother looking at the pie. It isn't ready yet. That bit at high temperature ensures that the eggs cook all the way through. But keeping the temperature that high will burn the top and crust edges. So lower the temperature to 325 degrees, which is 162.8 degrees Celsius, and bake for another 30 to 35 minutes. Take a look at your pie. The crust edge should be golden, but not brown. The edges of the pie should be starting to crack. The center should be set and firm when poked, but still have a glossy or damp look to it. If the center still seems a bit too soft, close the oven door, turn off the heat, and leave it in the warm oven for another 10 minutes. Since this pie crust is so full, I did add the extra 10 in the warm oven. If you are serving this as a side item, you're going to let it cool on a cooling rack for at least 15 minutes up to one hour before serving. If you want to serve it as a dessert, chill it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. Serve with whipped cream. Since the recipe called for six ounces of heavy cream or half and half, chances are you bought a 16 ounce container and have 10 ounces left over. Add one quarter to a half cup of sugar, 
Personal taste determines how sweet you want it. And a half teaspoon of vanilla extract to the leftover. And whip with a mixer on high for two to three minutes. Five to six minutes with that manual egg beater until stiff peaks form. Do not over whip it as the water will separate and you end up with extra sweet home turned butter. I found that out when I was six years old and my mother told me to whip the cream then left the room. If you used half and half like I did, you can whip it and turn it into whipped cream, but you have to add that or a thickener to it. Half and half is roughly 12% milk fat, while heavy cream is 30 to 40% fat, roughly three times more. You can add softened butter at a 1 to 8 ratio. If you have a 16 ounce carton of half and half and used 6 ounces in the pie, you should have 10 ounces left to make whipped cream. You would need to add 1 and a quarter ounces of butter which is just over a tablespoon. That adds enough fat to make it whip up, but it will still revert to liquid faster. Some people swear that adding a tablespoon of olive oil will help it whip. I believe olive oil has a strong flavor and would alter the taste too much. You can also place your half and half bowl and beaters in the freezer for an hour before whipping it. The colder temperature will help it form soft peaks. Alternatively, you can add a thickener to it. I have some of my grandmother's cookbooks from the 1940s and 1950s that recommend adding a touch of cornstarch or a smidgen of cream of tartar to thicken half and half enough to whip it. You also have to add more sugar. A lot more sugar. I like a slightly sweet whipped cream with a touch of vanilla extract. One of these cookbooks says you have to use two cups of sugar to one cup of half and half. That just sounds too sweet for my tastes. So this is how my pie turned out after chilling in the refrigerator for two hours. I did not successfully turn half and half into whipped cream. It tastes fantastic on its own. The crust stuck to my pie pan a bit and it's not as flaky as I like. I do think allowing the pie to rest in the hot oven that is turned off for the extra 10 minutes helped set the middle quite a bit. Give the recipe a try and tell me how well it worked for you in the comments.